Good evening. My name is Bonnie Schaff, and on behalf of the League of Women Voters of LaPorte County Board and members, we welcome the candidates and the audience members who are here tonight, and thank you all for coming. And thank you also to our viewers online. Uh, tonight's forum is co-sponsored by Access LaPorte County Media, also known as ELCO, and Drew White, the Director of Operations, is not here tonight, but he asked that I announce that this candidate's forum is being shown on Comcast Cable Channel 97 and on the Access LaPorte County website at accesslaportcounty.org. A fully produced version of tonight's forum will be available on the ELCO YouTube channel within 24 hours. Last week's forum held in the council chambers at City Hall in Michigan City is already available for viewing on the ELCO YouTube channel. So uh, thank you to Drew White and to the camera operators, Kevin and Anna, for uh, their work here tonight. Thank you. The League of Women Voters of LaPorte County is a nonpartisan organization which does not support or oppose any political party or candidate. We encourage informed and active participation in government. We study and advocate for public policies. We reach out to the public with civic education programs and presentations by community leaders. We engage voters through candidate forums, voter registration drives, get out the vote activities, and with our online voters guide, vote411.org. We welcome women and men who want to assure that democracy works for everyone. Our online voters guide, vote411.org, um, went live this past weekend, so uh, we encourage you to check out this source of voting and ballot information. On Vote 411, you can preview what's on your ballot. You can read the survey questions which the candidates have answered and compare their answers. Um, it also links to the IN.gov voter portal where you can register to vote or check your voter registration status and where you, you can find the vote centers in LaPorte County which you can filter by distance from your address. The voter's guide goes um, went live this weekend, and if you find that some of the candidates on your ballot have not answered their vote 411 survey, please encourage them to do so. But as of now, I believe we have 75% of the candidates have actually filled out their surveys. So this is a really good source of information. Um, the candidates have time to consider what their, what their answers will be. They have plenty of time, all the time they want, to write out their answers. And so it's different from a situation like this where they have to kind of think on their feet and, and uh, answer uh, questions spontaneously. So this um, will um, give you more in-depth information about the candidates. There are several important election dates to remember, so please take time now to to make a plan for how and when you will vote. Voter registration ends this coming Monday, October 7th. You may submit a voter registration application in person at the voter registration office in LaPorte or online at in.gov slash voter portal, but the deadline is coming up on Monday. Early voting begins the next day, Tuesday, October 8th. We have four early voting locations in our county. In LaPorte, um, the county at the uh, LaPorte County Fairgrounds on State Road 2 in this small project building. In Michigan City, early voting is in the county building at the corner of 8th and Wabash Street. In Rolling Prairie, it's held at the uh, Wills Community Center, 6981 East 350 North, Rolling Prairie. And in Wanata, it's held at the Wanata Town Hall at 104 North Main Street in Wanata. Early voting hours are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And on Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. On Saturdays, October 26th and November 2nd, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And on Monday, November 4th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. October 17th is the first day that a confined voter may vote before an absentee ballot voter board. October 24th is the deadline for submitting an absentee ballot application. Absentee ballots may be mailed in, but must be received, not just postmarked, 
by the County Election Board prior to 6 p.m. on Election Day, November 5th. The mobile voting unit schedule with location and dates is now posted on the LaPorte County Election Board site on the county website. If you just Google uh, LaPorte County Election Board, it'll take you to that. Go to that, and it's at, on the uh, home page at the bottom of the screen, mobile voting unit schedule. Um, as you probably know, we now have vote centers in LaPorte County. Election day is Tuesday, November 5th, and polls will be open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You will no longer vote at your precinct polling place, but can choose any vote center in the county to vote at. So if you live, live in Michigan City, but you happen to be in Westville that day, you can vote in Westville. You don't have to go back to um, your precinct or, or even the city you live in. Any place in the county, any vote center will be available for you. Um, the vote centers are listed on the election board webpage, or you can use the QR code on the back of the program here, and the QR code takes you straight to IN.gov voter portal, and that, if you put in your address, it will give you a list. You can filter by distance from your address, and um, you'll find out where all of the voter cent vote centers are in the county, and uh, including the ones that are closest to your address. Um, let's see. Vote centers are new, and they, but they do have a lot of advantages over um, precinct polling places, and they were, um, we started using those last year in this uh, county, and I think it was very successful. Um, I don't think there were very many complaints about it or anything, even though it's not your usual place. So there are a lot of voters who have not voted in the past year, and so they are going to be getting used to that. So help out people if you need to, um, if they're asking you, where in the world do I vote? My precinct isn't open. So um, when you do go to vote, be sure to take your state-issued ID with you or your passport or your military ID with you to vote. But please make sure that you vote. By voting, you participate in the democratic process. The right to vote is the most enshrined right in the Constitution and is protected by five separate amendments. Your vote counts. Voting is the way to make your voice heard. And another um, something that uh, the League is encouraging is that people really consider, and you can do so at forums like this and on Vote 411, consider all of the candidates there, um, and consider all of the candidates for each office because if you vote straight ticket, you're going to miss some good people because there are good candidates in both of the parties, Republican and Democratic. And so um, really, you're probably going to serve your own interests and those of the whole community best if you vote by candidate. You may end up voting all the same party, but at least if you look at each name on the ballot, you're at least considering the people. So we ask that you consider doing that rather than voting straight ticket. Um, we want to thank the candidates who are with us tonight. Um, the rules for this forum are as follows. The moderator and screener will determine the order of the presentations. The screeners are right back here. Um, and they are accepting questions from the audience now, written questions. Um, candidates will be given two minutes for an opening statement, one minute to answer each question, and one minute for closing remarks. In the interest of time, the number of questions for the candidates may be limited. We will ask candidates, whether opposed or not, to answer questions. A timer sitting in the front row will hold up a yellow card as a 15-second warning and a red card when the candidate's time is up and they need to finish their statement or sentence. Only written questions screened by the League's Voter Services Committee will be accepted. 
Press releases about this forum invited members of the public to submit written questions in advance by sending them to the League's email address, and we accept questions from audience members who are present tonight. League members have index cards and pencils for audience members to use to write their questions, and the League members will deliver the questions to the screeners. The League expects courtesy to be shown to everyone. The League will not allow personal attacks, yelling, name-calling, or showing disrespect, and will interrupt or stop a candidate if needed while the clock is ticking. No outbursts or disruptions are allowed from the audience members or they will be asked to leave. Please remember this is a forum, not a debate. No visual aids will be permitted and candidates may not display any campaign materials here tonight. Audience members, please submit your questions at any time, including while the candidates are giving their opening statements and answering questions. Several candidates are on the ballot for county and state legislative rates, races, and due to the length of the forum, we couldn't invite all of them on the same night. So to the uh, candidates forum tonight, we invited those running for LaPorte County Clerk, LaPorte County Recorder, LaPorte County Treasurer, County Council at Large, State Representative District 20, and State Senate District 08. The candidates at last week's forum in Michigan City were those running for the offices of County Auditor, Coroner and Surveyor, Circuit Court Judge, County Commission District 2 and 3, and State Representative for District 9. That forum can be viewed, be viewed on Access LaPorte County's YouTube channel. If you are not attending the forums in person, we hope you will watch them on, broad, uh, on broadcast. Um, we will hope you will watch them on ALCO's Facebook page or website or Comcast channel uh, 97, and this forum will be available to watch on the YouTube channel. We're going to begin tonight with the, um, the offices of LaPorte County Clerk, Recorder, and Treasurer. There are two candidates for LaPorte County Clerk, Democratic candidate Angela Hensman and Republican candidate Heather Stevens. And for the entire evening, I will be introducing candidates alphabetically by their um, last name. It's not by party or anything. So, um, so we will now, be, now begin with a two-minute opening statement from Angela Hensman. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Angela Hensman, and I am running for LaPorte County Clerk. I currently work within the voter registration office here in LaPorte County. I am passionate about protecting voters' rights and access to vote. I believe that you all would agree with me that this is one of our most precious rights, and it has been fought and died for. And so it is something that I am extremely passionate about, and I believe the clerk's office is responsible for protecting that right. That is why I am running this year. I also am passionate about service. Before I was in voter registration, I worked in retail management, and before that, I was a pastor, and so I've learned many important lessons about customer service and community service. And when elected clerk, I will make sure that our clerk's office serves each and every voter, each and every citizen with courtesy and respect. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Heather Stevens. Thank you. My name is Heather Stevens. I am the current circuit court clerk. Can you guys hear me okay? A little louder. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I absolutely agree with with Angela here. Um, I, I not only is it is it the the responsibility of the clerk to protect the rights of the voters, but also the integrity of the election. And it can be a it can be a, a fine line. Um, so that that was a big reason for the push for the vote centers, which if you have watched a county council meeting or a county commissioner's meeting in the last four years, you know that getting everybody to agree on something is very rare. And everybody agreed. The two parties agreed. It was time for vote centers. I've said from day one, if you are not voting in LaPorte County, I'm going to make sure it's because you don't want to. And I have absolutely succeeded in that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, and now we have um, several questions for the clerk candidates because one of your um, uh, responsibilities is elections. There are uh, a lot of questions. Anyway, um, but first of all, we'll begin um, with Heather and ask, what do you consider to be the most important responsibilities um, of the clerk's office? Oh, there are so many. Um, the, the clerk's office doesn't just do elections. Um, we, you know, we maintain all, all of the records for the courts. When, when somebody comes in to, you know, to try to get a restraining order, we're, we're the people that they're, that they're talking with. So uh, the, the responsibilities are, are great all the way around. I, I don't know of one, one most important thing. I, I think it's all incredibly important. Okay, thank you. And Angie, the same question. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? What do you consider to be the most important responsibilities of the clerk's office? I think that it's very important that we are serving, no matter what the need is when someone comes into the office, that we are doing so in a way um, that is factual, that, it, that is knowledgeable, um, in a way that helps that person specifically. So no matter whether they're coming for um, election and voting services or they're coming for their, for their court case or for child support, um, that we are there with the best information, the right forms, and that we are helping them all the way along as much as possible. So I think that's our responsibility, regardless of what area. Okay, thank you. And this question um, will be for, again, for both of you. Um, but first, it will be for Angie. Um, if elected, what will you do to improve the efficiency and customer service in the clerk's office? Exactly. So this is one of the areas that I really want to focus on um, being in management. I feel like a big part of efficiency in our clerk's office has to do with training and proper being properly prepared and communicating with all of our teams. And so when we're working with creating a, a place that is for uh, customer service, we have to make sure that our people understand the job and they know how to serve the people best. And that means uh, knowing and communicating when there are important dates and things that need to be uh, communicated. Um, one of the reasons uh, that you know I, I want to run is to make sure that we are doing this accurately and. and so I just want to, you know, make sure that we are doing these things. We've seen several times where the forms have been incorrect and where people have not been served properly, and we want to make sure everyone is trained to do that. Thank you. Um, next question. Oh, wait a minute. I, you didn't get to answer this, did you? No. I do that. Um, oh, no, you, you've answered did you answer this one? Okay. No. Okay. Okay. No, I don't even know where it is. The uh, efficiency in customer service. If elected, well, if reelected, what will you do to improve the efficiency in customer service in the clerk's office? Um, I, I would keep doing exactly what I've been doing. Um, we are constantly training. We are constantly cross-training. And if you've been in there, again, if you've been in the clerk's office the last four years, you've seen a big change in the customer service. We, we also have to be very careful because we are not attorneys. And we have to be incredibly cautious to, to not give legal information. So we, legal advice, uh, we, have to, we have to watch it. So again, we walk a very fine line and my team does a phenomenal job. Thank you. Next question, uh, we'll begin with um, Heather and then Angie. Explain how elections are monitored to ensure that voters' choices are honored. Heather. Okay. First. So this year, you guys are going to see some, some new things. Um, we've kind of been introducing the booth is going to look different this year. And the reason for that is Indiana has gone, there is a, it's called a VVPAT. Basically, it's a paper trail box on every single machine. And the way, that, the way that we are ensuring 
that our, our machines are doing exactly as they should be, well, now we have a paper trail. So we've had this bef in the last few years. I, we had them in 2020. They just weren't used. Um, we introduced them in 2022 just to get the public used to it, get our, our election workers used to it, and now they are connected to every single machine. We, the checks and balances that, that we put into this are incredible. Um, for every vote on a machine, we better see a, a voter signed in on the poll book. So I, I'm getting the warning, so I'm stopping. Okay, thank you. And Angie, explain how elect elections are monitored to ensure voters' choices are honored. I also want to uh, include that this has to do with voter registration. It has to do with um, a system that is very carefully monitored uh, statewide. It is not easy for random people uh, to, to get a ballot in, in this state or in this county. Um, it, it, we are monitoring our, our voter rolls. Um, it, we pay attention. I hear a lot from my office that dead people are voting quite often, and I can assure you that is not the case. I can also assure you that you will not see people voting in duplicate elections. Um, the system does not allow for multiple um, absentee ballots or for multiple locations. And so while Vote Centers has made it easier for people to access, it will not allow people to access more than once. And I think that is so important um, when we are protecting everyone's rights. Okay, thank you. Um, next question will be for both of you, and we'll begin with Angie. Do you have any concerns about how the traveling board is functioning? If you were elected, what will you do about this? I think that the traveling board is, is a tricky subject because we are subject to a lot of the state laws, and they are changing constantly. Um, and I think, again, it comes down to we need to be training those who are in charge of putting together our travel board. I know that there are resources, there are uh, videos that the, count, that the state has put together with those resources. There are also um, booklets with the laws that govern those things. And I, I fear that we are not following those laws. Um, and it all comes back down to, are we training our people about the changing laws? Are we training our people uh, what is lawful and what is not? And are we helping um, to make sure that we are serving the voters best as possible? Thank you. And Heather, do you have any concerns about how the traveling board is functioning? I, I always have concerns about everything, so that's, that's pretty typical. But um, act, I don't have concerns about how it is functioning. Um, oftentimes with election law, and they do change, they change often. And oftentimes they're, they're difficult to, to interpret. And so more than once our, our absentee board has come to the election board to say, could we don't understand this, this portion of this election law what is your interpretation? And at that point, the election board has to give our interpretation, and that's the way we are to proceed. And when, when I contact downstate, that's exactly what they tell us to do. So again, we do everything to the absolute best of our ability, and it is challenging when things are constantly changing. Um, but but we, follow, we follow election law, again, to the absolute best of our ability. Okay. Um. Now we have a question just for Heather. Um, when will the early voting locations be available on indianavoters.com? Why isn't it on the website already? Yeah, that was an SVRS issue. First of all, it took us a long time to get that, uh, to, to get them approved. And they're, they're all on there. It just took longer than expected, so. Okay, on the website or on the IN? On, the, through through the state voter registration system. Oh, okay, that's where I had to enter everything at, and it's it's done. It's it's been done, but it just took longer than expected because we were waiting for locations. Okay, okay, um, and a question for Angela: um, What would you do to ensure that all poll workers are adequately trained and comfortable using the election poll books and other equipment? Right. I, I would want to begin by saying that if you check Indiana voters right now, it is not on there properly. 
And this is something that we've been on the clerk's office for a couple of weeks now to get fixed since we've known about the election. The early voting locations, only Wills and Wanata are showing up, which is why I've had a multitude of calls today asking why we don't have anything in Michigan City and LaPorte. And it's important that we have these resources updated as fast as possible because that's what the voters rely on. As far as training goes, um, we absolutely have to make sure every single worker is trained. None of this only inspectors crap because everybody has an important job and they all need to know what they're doing on election day. Um, and that is something that needs to be done um, carefully and with great thought. And we need to have a team doing it, not just one or two people, but that we bring in the other departments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. I think this one for um, both of the candidates. Um, what will you do to make sure all absentee ballots can be verified and counted by the end of election day? And let's start with Heather. It's it's all about organization, um, and we we've done we've done some things differently than what we did in 2020 because we planned we planned for a, a large amount of absentee by mail ballots, and just talking to the workers, they came to me today just to say I, there were eight teams down there in 2020. It was absolute chaos. There was paperwork everywhere. This year, it's it's in a file cabinet, and everything is just very organized, and and they can easily go get what they need and verify everything that they need to verify. Okay. And um, same question for Angie. What will you do to make sure all absentee ballots can be verified and counted by the end of election day? I think that this is a non-issue. I think that this is happening very well um, with the teams and, and the people who do this every year are very clear on how they need to do it. Um, but again, communication and, and having that organization is very important and they are very organized in there. And that is so important to make sure that it's organized by precinct and ready to go for elections. So preparation and, and um, training and also communication. Okay, thank you. And final question, and it'll be the same one for both of you. And we'll begin with Angie. How do you make a complaint about a clerk if they misfile a motion or order? Angie. That's a good question. I don't think that we have a solid process at this point. I think that it's either you put it in writing and hand it to the person at the window or you put it in an email and send it to the clerk. Um, but there should be a a process in which people can put their their complaints there and be heard and can be addressed in a timely manner. And when I'm elected, that will be something that we put into place. Okay, thank you. And Heather, um, how do you make a complaint about a clerk if they misfile a motion or order? This, this drove me nuts in 2020 and it, it drives me nuts now. Um, no, you're absolutely right. If you want to file a complaint about the clerk, you file it with the clerk. Um, the, the clerk is no different than the county auditor, the treasurer. Um, they're an elected, the recorder. Um, you are an elected official. And the person that I answer to is the voters and the public. So there, there is absolutely nothing in place. And right, right wrong, or otherwise, you have, to, you, have to take, you have to take any kind of criticism to heart. And if somebody is complaining, you should be looking into that. So, Okay, thank you. And let's see. Okay, and now um, you may now give your one-minute closing statement, and we'll begin with Heather Stevens, Republican candidate for clerk. Okay. Um, as far as things not being on the, on the state's website, I'm going to go check that immediately because it should be there. Um, you know, we're not just training Republicans. We're not just training Democrats. I'm following state statutes, and the reason that, that we're doing we're, we are only requiring the inspectors to be trained because everybody else, for the most part, has been doing this for, this will be their sixth election now. So they're, they're used to it. Um, everybody, everybody is welcome to attend the training, and that's what all of our poll workers are being told. That's what the letter says that's going out. So it's all good. Um, if somebody has, again, if they've done this multiple times and they're comfortable, they do not, attending is not going to be a requirement. So... 
I have done everything that I was asked to do as clerk, and I would very much appreciate being able to continue. Thank you. Thank you. And Angie Hensman, your one-minute closing statement. Yes. So I chose to run because I have concerns about the way that this election, it, the elections are being run. I know there's much more to do with the clerk's office. I will ask you, um, especially those who are in Michigan City right now, when, you, when there were seven locations that were shut down during the switch to vote centers and nothing was added, we did not make sure that we had locations along transportation routes. Um, we, are, we closed down services at the Michigan City courthouse. I would ask you, because she's right, there is no complaint process except the ballot. And so what I ask you is, are you feeling served? Are you feeling respected by the current administration? And if not, I hope that you will go out on election day and you will vote for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and um, we may now, we will now continue with the candidates for um, LaPorte County Recorder. But again, thank you very much to both um, Heather Stevens and Angela Hunsman, um, clerk candidates. Thank you. Um, the candidates... <laughs> the candidates for recorder are Republican candidate is Elsbietta Bilderback, and you uh, like to be called Ella. Is that true? Correct. Okay. <laughs> and Democratic candidate is Matthew Sikorsky, do you prefer Matt or Matt? Yes, I do. That's correct. Matt. Okay, good. I'm trying to remember that. Okay. Okay, we will begin with the two-minute two minute opening statement from Republican candidate for recorder, Ella Bilderback. Good evening. My name is Ella Bilderback, and I am your current LaPorte County recorder. My story is the story of American Dream. I came to America from Poland in 1990. I was determined and in the pursuit of opportunities this country offers. I met my late husband, Laporte native in Chicago, and in 1995, we moved back to his hometown to raise our family. In 2011, I became a United States citizen. This finally gave me the opportunity to participate in our election process. I am com committed to fulfillment of my duties. I wish to use the knowledge I have gained to continue serving you. I have taken every opportunity to become the best I can be at my job. I earned AIC Institute of Excellence County Government Certificate, a NACO Leadership Academy Master Certificate, and I also completed required 40 hours of office-specific training. I just finished my second term as Indiana Recorders Association District Chair. I am pleased with the progress I made so far by upgrading equipment in my office. We now have a plat printer that allows us to record and print plats in much better, um, more efficient way. By making back indexing in the house project, I saved the county well over $600,000. My goal is to complete the remaining documents. I've cleaned out the vault where we start, store deed books, and last year I started the preservation and restoration process. All the while, we are providing residents with excellent, uninterrupted customer service. My office is efficient, staff highly knowledgeable, dedicated, and friendly. Just last week, I received an email that reaffirms this. Here's a short excerpt. But the main reason I'm writing to you is to tell you about your wonderful office staff. The ladies at your front counter were exceptionally helpful to me. They were so graciously patient with all my questions and so very courteous to all who visited the office during the seven or eight hours I spent there. Oh, my time is up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Matt Sikorsky, your um, two-minute opening statement, please. <clears throat> thank you. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the League of Women Voters for hosting this event and also sponsoring all of us to be here tonight, and for all those who have joined us in the audience to learn more about all of us candidates and what we stand for and what we will do if we get into office. Also, I'd like to thank Alco TV for televising this so more people can get involved and see this at home, online, and everywhere else, because being able to vote and have a voice in your democracy is very important, and people should never, ever take that for granted. My name is Matt Sikorsky. Uh, I grew up here in LaPorte County. Uh, my family has been in business for over 75 years in the county in the agricultural business. I helped run that business, uh, went to college, graduated, came back, ran, helped run the business, worked in other businesses around the area, 
and now for the last 10 years I've also run my own business here. So the Port County is in my blood, and I would like to see this go on and continue in the future so it can continue to grow and thrive so other people can have the same exact chance to further themselves and call this a home because it's a beautiful area out here, and people, this is a hidden gem of Northwest Indiana, it truly is. <clears throat> With my business background, I will stress in the office that everyone is, tri is treated the same way that I would expect to be treated walking into that office. I will stress efficiency, effectiveness, transparency, and information. It doesn't matter if you come in with a question about the office. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have a come with a question or a concern or dealing with a document in the office. If you just want to walk into the office and say, hey, I have, I don't know where to go for this. What can we do? I want you to be treated like if I came in there, I would do the same thing for you. So I look forward to learning more about everyone else and have them learn about me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now for the questions. Uh, the first question will begin with Matt, and it will be the same question for Ella, too. What are the most important responsibilities of the county recorder? I believe the most important responsibility is to make sure that all your recording documents of all the deeds and the uh, and military records and all that is treated with the utmost security and professionalism and efficiency that is possible. You come in there, you're purchasing a new home, you want to have this go as smoothly as possible, and you need to help. And I think it's important that we go out and give that information to make the people so you don't have to make one or two or three trips to get everything done. So the more that we can get the information out to people so they know how to do that is the utmost importance of that and that they can rely that it's being done transparently and securely and they know that their documents are secured safely. Thank you. And Ellen, the same question. What are the most important responsibilities of the county recorder? Our responsibility, our biggest responsibility is to make sure that the documents we receive are recorded promptly. All the transactions in our office are very important. Title companies, banks, they rely on us to get things recorded in timely manner because when the title company is closing on a house, they have to be sure that everything was recorded and that the title is clear. Our staff has almost 100 years of experience all combined. They know exactly what they're doing, and we trained constantly. The laws and regulations change. We have to stay on top of it, and maintaining records accurately is crit critical, it really is. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And the next question um, will be the same for both of you, and we'll begin with Ella. What do you see as the biggest challenges that the uh, recorder faces? At the moment, we're looking at laws that are coming, and those have to do with protection of privacy for victims of um, abuse, victims of um, child abuse, adult abuse, um, those folks are now being protected through uh, Office of Attorney General. Uh, it was a process that the Recorders Association worked with the Attorney General because we have to follow our rules and they have to have a system set up that pro protects folks. So this is a new thing that is coming in. Um, the other thing is called Daniel's Law. And that protects groups like uh, judges, attorneys, um, in some cases, teachers, uh, police officers. That's a new system coming in, too, that we will be uh, shielding their information so they are not victims of um, violence. The law came to being because a judge lost her son. Um, unfortunately, somebody found information about where she lives and went to her house. And um, so that's how the law came to be. Thank you. And Matt, uh, same question. What do you see as the biggest challenges for the recorder's office? I would believe the, the, incur, you know, the increase of the possibility of fraud against someone's property, uh, trying to both you have people just squatting on properties and also the scam artists out there who are trying to 
uh, steal your property by forging documents, forging mortgages on your house and stuff like that. So the security of that, the encryption of that, the coming up with the new ideas to fight the way so that, you know, you don't have someone stealing your documents like that. And it's very important, and it's a great program that the office, the office currently offers right now, it's been there for a while, is that property fraud alert program that's in there. And I think everyone should review that and sign up if you haven't already because that is a big help to everybody. Okay, thank you. And um, the final question, um, and we'll begin, and it'll be the same question for both of you. We'll begin with Matt. The question is, why are you the best candidate for the office of recorder? Uh, I feel I am the best candidate because, like I said, with my business background, I work with efficiency, I work with effectiveness, and I also make sure that customer service is greatly important if you want to be a successful businessman. So I always stress to all my employees that I want, I will treat you the same way I expect you to treat me, and that goes for the office. I will expect everyone that works in that office for me that when you walk into the office, the person that you are meeting at the counter, you, I want you to treat them the same way you will be expect to be treated if you were walking into the office. So I think being informative, being transparent, and helpful as possible goes a long way to make people really understand and appreciate that our government is there working for you because that is what it is supposed to be doing for you. Okay, thank you. And Ella, the same question. Why are you the best candidate for the Office of Recorder? I feel that my track record of the work I've done and the improvements I've made in the last four years uh, speaks for itself. Uh, I've taken care of things that haven't been touched in years. Our equipment was in uh, upgraded. We um, have now a vault that I'm not ashamed of. Our customer service is exceptional. I started reading a part of an email earlier. If you wish to see it, I'll be happy to show you. But I had a customer who spent six, seven to eight hours in my office, and he could not say enough about how impressed he was. He said that there was a 180-degree difference from the government workers that you expect, and he was incredibly impressed with my staff, and I am too, because honestly, what you give out to your customers, to your constituents, it comes back to you. I believe in that. And, you know, I, I have a slogan, serving you with excellence, but honestly, it's a model by which I live. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and now, um, you may continue with your one-minute closing statements, and we'll begin with um, Matt Sikorsky's. Okay. Uh, thank you again. Uh, again, I would like to I appreciate and would like to thank the League of Women Voters for this wonderful event and for Alco TV. Again, it's very important to everybody to get out and understand your candidates, to learn about all the candidates, and make good choices, not just party lines. Choose the right candidate for that. I believe that I offer a wealth of experience in business and treatment of people the way I would expect to be treated, and that's what, I, that's what you can come to expect if I am elected for that office. So I would appreciate your vote before Election Day, November 5th, and thank you very much. Thank you. And Ella Bilderback, Republican candidate for Recorder, you, can may, you may give your uh, one-minute closing statement. Thank you. I'd like to say that this is not just a job for me. This is something I'm passionate about. I care about the work we do. I care about the service we provide. I care about the history of this county. The deed books that we preserve, that I'm working on making sure that they stay in good shape, everything I do every day is about providing the best customer service. It's about taking care of our constituents. When someone comes to my office, they don't just walk out angry or unhappy. Quite often we deal with customers who have um, tragic things happen to them. They lose a family member and then suddenly they're dealing with the property. We are able to help them. Like a lot of offices, we can't give out legal advice, but we can send you into the right uh, person, give you uh, the right direction and take care of the customer. Um, I believe that I've done a great job and I would appreciate your vote on or before November 5th. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And please give uh, the candidates a hand.
And we will now continue with the candidates for LaPorte County Treasurer. Republican candidate Dan Barani. Is that the? Barani. Pretty close. Barani. Okay, Barani, I'm sorry. And Democratic candidate Joey Winsky. Thank you for being here tonight. And we will begin with the two minute opening statement from Dan Barani. Well, first, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters in Alcoa for sponsoring this forum. I'm, my name is Dan Barney. I'm running for LaPorte County Treasurer. I'm a lifelong resident of LaPorte County. I've lived here 37 years, married to my wife, Carrie, with our two sons and our three granddaughters. I've been involved with the Boy Scouts of America through our sons. One of my sons is an Eagle Scout and the other is a Life Scout. I'm also a member of Acme Lodge number 83, FNAM in Michigan City. I spent most of my working career in a family business, where I worked that business, managed it, and I ended up owning that business. I run in a family business. You learn every aspect of that, that business. The customer service is a big priority. If you can't take care of your customers, you will not be in business. So customer service is a big deal. The finances of a business are tough nowadays. You have to watch every penny because they're your pennies. So you make sure you can track them in and out and make sure your customer is being taken care of. I also learned the logistics of bringing product in, getting it shipped out, repackaged, and back to the customers. So that experience, I think, will bode well for the treasurer's office. I also worked for Indiana Department of Transportation for about five and a half years. I was a fleet manager for LaPorte District. In that role, I managed six shops, had over 45 employees. I did all their capital purchases, and we maintained 2,000 pieces of power equipment to keep on the road when needed for the service to the citizens of our area. I also learned how to work with downstate because you had to work with all the different agencies to, to make the system roll. I mean, you had to work with four different agencies just to get a license plate. So that's how state government works. Sometimes government doesn't work very efficient. But I also learned to build relationships, and that's what I also want to bring to the county. So I believe there's a lot of things we can improve, but I think with dedication and hard work, we can improve LaPorte County, and working with all elected officials will go a long way. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, now the two minutes st opening statement from Joey Winsky, Democratic candidate for treasurer. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me and all of us tonight. Uh, my name is Joey Winsky, and I am your current LaPorte County treasurer. I uh, have dedicated most of my life, most of my adult life, to public service. I started in the Michigan Township Assessor's Office served two terms on the Michigan City Common Council, eight years as your LaPorte County Auditor, and I'm in my fourth year now as your Treasurer. Um, as you know, experience counts. I have probably, uh, at, among all of our candidates uh, this year, I think I probably have the most experience in government. Um, in 2014, as your auditor, if you'll remember, we had no tax bills. We had uh, provisional bills that were being sent out. Within 14 months, I led the county team to restore those tax bills to normal uh, mailing and uh, normal tax bill cycles, bringing in a lot of money for the council that was much needed. In 2018, uh, I restored our credit rating to an A++++ rating, and we uh, were able to facilitate a bond to renovate the Michigan City Courthouse. In 2021, um, there, when I took office as the LaPorte County Treasurer, and in fact, in 2019, this started, there was $5 million that was unrecorded. Um, it was an unrecorded investment. In 2021, as the treasurer, I found that money. There's no um, substitute for experience in this job. I'm very proud of the job that I do, and um, I would like to continue as your county treasurer. Okay. Thank you. Um, and now we have some questions. Um, the first question will be for both of you, and we'll begin with um, Joey Winsky. What are the most important duties of the treasurer, and why are you the best candidate? I think I'm the best candidate because of my experience. 
I, um, like I said, I've been around since 1987 when I started with the assessor's office. I've worked in the assessor's office, I've worked in the auditor's office, and I've worked in the treasurer's office. That's, those are your, that are, those three offices are your county financial team. I have always been a steward of the taxpayers and always watched, um, watched out for the taxpayers and made sure that their money, their tax dollars, are spent wisely. That's why I think I'm the best candidate. Okay, thank you. And Dan Barony, um, same question. What are the most important duties of the treasurer and why are you the best candidate? Well, I think one of the most important duties for the treasurer would be making sure that your office runs to serve the citizens of LaPorte County. Government is there to serve us, the citizens. We're also there to keep our records accurate, make sure our reports are done on time. We're also there to make sure we're communicating with the council and with all the citizens to be transparent so they know the finances of our county. We're also there to manage the money of our, our county. You know, if we don't invest our money properly, we can lose millions of dollars by not investing it properly. And that happens in LaPorte County. So I believe I'm the best candidate because I'm not a politician. I'm a business person who wants to bring business practices, service back to government, and put the citizens first. And not the bickering and all the monkey business that's been going on in LaPorte County politics for a lot of years. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and um, next question will be the uh, same question for both of you, um, and we'll begin, begin with Dan Barony. How would you define the responsibility for audit and risk management? Well, the responsibility for, for auditing is making sure you're doing your proper work ahead of time, training your staff to make sure it's done properly. Making sure you're keeping records of what's happening so when there is a question, you can go back and find the answer. A risk management is just making sure that you're streamlining your systems, everybody's trained, and it's just the simple things, you know, like making sure your cash drawer is counted by two different people when you take in a lot of money. So that you know what's going on, you have checks and balances. So that's, a, you know, a lot of it is just common sense business practice that's been going on for a long time, but that needs to come back into county government. Training your staff, setting goals for your staff, giving them the tools to meet those goals, and monitoring them to make sure that they are getting there. Um, that is all part of running a proper office, and that's what I want to bring back to county government, the basic business practices that make people successful. We forgot that in government. Government needs to serve the citizens of LaPorte County again. Okay, thank you. And uh, Joey Winsky, same uh, question. How would you define the responsibilities for off audit and risk management? The county is audited every year by the State Board of Accounts. When I took office in 2021, uh, well, let me back up. The auditor is the check on the treasurer and the treasurer is the check on the auditor. When I took office in 2021, that check and balance was not in sync. The State Board of Accounts mandated that I go back and I um, restore or reconcile uh, five years of uh, bank reconciliations because they were not done properly and they were not completed. I just finished that five year cycle. But um, that, that's the, the aud yearly audits have to be brought back into compliance. My 15 seconds. <laughs> Is I, I, I'm up. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, and the final question for our treasurer um, candidates. Um, it will be the same question for both of you. It was revealed this past week that LaPorte County nearly lost $2.4 million when a check was issued to a fraudulent payee. A similar incident involved a loss of nearly $3,000. Reportedly, procedural changes have been made to help prevent a recurrence, but there are still indications that checks are still being issued without complete documentation. How will you address this situation? And we will begin with Joey Winsky. 
Well, first, let me say that this is an answer that takes more than the one minute that we're allowed. But I will say that uh, this could have been prevented had we followed our um, IT um, training schedule. And um, if every staff member in every office would take that IT training on cyber fraud, it, this could have been prevented. That was not the case in this. And this started um, with a letter that was uh, sent to the um, auditor's office and the information was changed without really investigating it and doing dil due diligence. And it wasn't until it got to me that I did the due diligence and I reversed the check. Okay, thank you. And the same question for Dan Barony. It was revealed this week that LaPorte County nearly lost $2.4 million when a check was issued to a fraudulent payee. A similar incident involved a loss of nearly $3,000. Reportedly, procedural changes have been made to help prevent a recurrence, but there are still indications that checks are still being issued without complete documentation. How will you address this situation? Well, this goes basically back to leadership. Um, Obviously, the people managing these departments weren't following proper procedures. Their staff was not properly trained. They didn't know how to handle the situation. It, making sure your staff knows how to deal with situations, making sure they're comfortable to come and ask a question. You know, if you don't have the answer as a staff, you want to be a leader that they're saying, they'll knock on your door and say, hey, I don't know what to do here, or I think something's wrong. They'll bring that to you so you can maybe prevent things like that happening. But again, communicating with your staff, training your staff, giving your staff the tools to do their job correctly, giving them the freedom to work in their office and be comfortable with you and bringing things to you, it goes a long way to preventing problems and just having common sense business procedures in place. I mean, you think about it, one of the biggest vendors of the county almost got their information frauded through us because we didn't do proper checks and balances. That should never happen. Okay, thank you. And now um, you may continue with your one-minute closing statements, and we will begin with Joey Winsky. Thank you. Uh, in my several years of government experience, I ha think that I have um, experienced almost everything you could probably experience, from uh, a, an employee embezzling money to um, just recently the $2.4 million fraud check that was caught. Thank God. Um, I have always been an advocate for taxpayers. I uh, believe in transparency. I believe in trust. And most of all, I believe in experience. We all know what happens with inexperience and with inexperienced leaders. I am a proven leader, and I would like to continue as your treasurer for the next four years. I, re I uh, request your vote. On, on or before November 5th. Thank you very much, and thanks again for having us. Thank you. And uh, Dan Barony, your one-minute closing statement, please. Well, I'd like to thank again the uh, League of Women Voters for putting on the forum. There is a big difference between these two candidates. I am not a politician. I'm a business person. Our county has had some terrible audits by State Board of Accounts. In fact, I encourage every taxpayer to go look at State Board of Accounts, what they say about our county. It is actually terrible. It's public record. Please go look at it. We talk about experience. Well, how, as the taxpayers of Wilport County, what experience have you guys had for the last 12 years? Wilport County is behind the other counties around us. You go to St. Joe or, or South Bend, Mishawaka, businesses everywhere. Valparaiso, Chesterton, businesses everywhere. We need that back in LaPorte County. We need leaders who will work together, no matter the party, no matter the personality, who will work together to move our county forward. We've been lacking that in LaPorte County. I want to bring a business approach. I want to bring integrity back and customer service back to LaPorte County. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And <laughs> okay. Thank you to all of our candidates tonight for these important uh, county offices, clerk, recorder, and treasurer. 
And you may now be seated in the audience, and we'll ask all of the um, candidates for county council at large to come up here, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, we will now turn to the candidates for LaPorte County Council at large seats. Um, there are six candidates running for the seats, three Democratic candidates, three Republican candidates, and voters throughout the county will vote for three. Is that correct? Okay. Um, the candidates for county council at large are, and this is in alphabetical order, um, Scott Ford, who is not here tonight. He sent his regrets because he was at a training for um, work. Um, Republican candidate Brett Kessler. Republican candidate Adam Karanka. Karanka, is that correct? Okay. Um, Democratic candidate Mike Molenauer. Republican candidate Heather Oak. And Democratic candidate Johnny Stimley. Thank you all for being here tonight. Um, so we will begin with two-minute opening statements from each candidate, and we're just going to go in alphabetical order, beginning with Brett Kessler. All right. Well, good evening, and uh, welcome to the second portion of tonight's event. Uh, once again, thank you to League of Women Voters and ALCA for uh, hosting this event tonight. Uh, I know they've got the school board debates going on as well, so maybe we're a little thin on attendance, but thank you everyone for being here and everyone for watching online. Um, I am Brett Kessler. I am running for one of the three seats for LaPorte County Council, um, the first string holder of county government. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of LaPorte County. I graduated from Purdue in 99. My wife and I have three children, two of which are back at Purdue, and one's still out at New Prairie High School. We farm in Scipio Township, and we also, um, uh, along with my father, have S&B Kessler Trucking, which is a trucking company that hauls propane and hydrous throughout the country. Um, I feel that uh, LaPorte County is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, wanting my three sons to come back, live here, prosper here, and um, have have the same opportunities that I've had over the last 25 years. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, the county, county government is very important to me. If you would have told me in 2017 that I would be running for this seat, I would have laughed at you. Uh, got involved with Leadership LaPorte County, really opened my eyes and said, you know what, somebody needs to step up to the plate and be a voice. And I feel I am that voice, especially for um, the agricultural sector. Uh, you don't see a lot of the farmers out here uh, running for office. Uh, we are the 1% that feed the 99. So with that, I am Brett Kessler, and I'll pass it off to Adam. Thank you. And Adam Karanka, a Republican candidate. Good evening, and thank you for having us. Um, my name is Adam Karanka. I'm one of three current sitting county councilmen at large, um, two of which are running for re-election. Uh, the last couple of years have been an absolute pleasure to serve for LaPorte County. I was appointed in December of 22 to start in, start in office in 23 to fill a vacancy by now Commissioner County Grammarosa. I have taken everything I've learned throughout my career as an engineer and manager in heavy industry um, to solve problems, whether that be business problems or just in functional problems within the county. Um, I am one of those that is going to dig deep and meet with each of the individuals that are here to serve the county, whether that be working in county buildings or to work out system problems such as um, how to interact with the public or what systems we need to put in place just because of what experience I have had through manufacturing and heavy industry. Um, I've lived in LaPorte County for the last 18 years, like Brett, got involved with Leadership LaPorte County a few years ago and realized the opportunities that were actually within reach to be part of leading the county and part of representing those that vote people into office and help solve the problems and help bring things forward. I see LaPorte County is having a lot of opportunity for growth and bringing well, you know, uh, good paying jobs to its residents in order to give greater opportunity for us to have our children come back to LaPorte County and live and raise their children here. Um, with that, I uh, will move on. 
Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you. And next is Mike Molenauer. Good evening, and I would like to also thank uh, League of Women Voters and Access LaPorte County for hosting this tonight. Um, I'm Mike Molenauer. I'm uh, on my second term right now, just completing my second term on the county council, so I'm running for re-election. I started in, uh, well, I'll get back to when I started in county government, but first uh, I started on the county council when an uh, unfortunate and sad situation occurred in 2017 when a lady by the name of, a uh, great lady by the name of Barbara Dean passed away unexpectedly, I think was on her fifth day of taking office as a county recorder. Um, they had a caucus, and a young lady by the name of Lois Sosinski acquired that office, and she at that time was a county council person, and uh, that opened up a vacancy. And in March of, uh, I think it was March 3rd, they had a caucus uh, for that seat, and I was awarded that seat as a county council member, and I was sworn in March 6th. So, like I say, I'm just completing my almost eighth full year as a county councilman and seeking my third term. Prior to that, I was the Port County Sheriff. Back in 2006, I ran for that office, and I was elected uh, in that year and took office 2007 and uh, completed my two terms, uh, re-election and the second term in 2014. And looking out through the audience, I don't see anyone that I've arrested, and I really <laughs> appreciate that, and I'm very thankful for that, really. So <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And next, uh, Heather Oak. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, this is a great venue, and I appreciate it. My name is Heather, and I am running for county council. I uh, am married uh, for 17 years to my husband. We have uh, seven kids, five foster children currently. I'm a nurse, an emergency room nurse, uh, for most of my 17 years of nursing. And I'm running for council um, to use my service uh, that I have acquired at, at home, caring for children in the workplace, caring for people, and hopefully um, serve the community in that same way by caring for the community and um, being a voice and a listening ear and um, hopefully making some changes in the right directions and um, just being there for the people and serving for the people uh, with any needs that they may have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And Johnny Stimley. First of all, uh, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for having this forum tonight. Um, my name is Johnny Stimley. Uh, some of the experience I have had um, with different government agencies is that I was county recorder at one time in LaPorte County. I did serve on the Michigan City Common Council. I've served on many boards and commissions throughout the county, such as the BCA, uh, the Water Board, uh, just to name a few. Uh, some of my background, like I said, I was a bit business owner. I have been involved with many organizations, such as the uh, Washington Park Zoo president for over 20 years. I serve on the Lighthouse Museum as their treasurer in Michigan City. I've, um, I've started a youth center in Michigan City, St. Michael's Youth Center, which we uh, do drones for the kids. And... And, and a lot of other different uh, organizations. But you know what? Words alone can't fix the problems that we have in this county. It takes a person that you trust, that takes action, and has a professional about themselves at the meetings. You know, you can always judge somebody by their actions and their performances in their past. I believe it's more than going to 11 meetings a year for the county council. It's to take somebody that will listen that will work as a team. Over the years, I have listened, I have heard their voices, the citizens throughout the poor county, attendant meetings, social media, and seen their concerns. So we took their ideas and visions to create my web website, johnnystimley.com. So I really want you to take a look at that because two minutes is not enough to explain uh, my policies and my views on the county. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll continue now with uh, questions. And the first question is going to be um, the same question for all of you. We're going to begin with um, Johnny Stimley and then go that way. So, but this is the question. How will you support and encourage economic growth and development in LaPorte County? Are there any projects you would like to see developed or discontinued? Please include your thoughts on solar farms and infrastructure. 
and beginning with um, um, John Easton Lee. First of all, when you look at uh, different projects throughout the county, you always look at different things like economic development, the housing, the solar farms. We have talked about Kingsbury Industries out there for years and years. We finally got the CSX Class 1 railroad in there. Um, no, we have to utilize the different things, the different water, the infrastructure that we do have in the county to make businesses accessible, accessible for this, to bring in different jobs, to have the resources for the different people, businesses to come here. One of the things, I have talked to different business owners in different establishments. One of the first things they do is come to a commissioner's and council meeting to see what they are dealing with before they come here. Like I said, I can go on about the solar farm, you know, um, you have to, the ordinance you have to you know put in place is you have to ensure the solar farm, if it's going to happen, to, to protect the local community, the environment, the property values around you. Um, you have to encourage responsible growth of renewable energy. You know, uh, the people to have a voice to go to the BCA meetings, to go to Thank the commissioner you. meetings. Thank you. Your time is up. Um, we'll continue now with Heather. I'll read the question again because it's lengthy. How will you support and encourage economic growth and development in LaPorte County? Are there any projects you would like to see developed or discontinued? Please include your thoughts on solar farms and infrastructure. Okay, I got to be fast because that's only a minute. That's a lot. Okay, so as far as economic development, um, I prefer instead of using up beautiful land that we have and, and building and building to renovate and tear down some of the crummy buildings that we have in within the county um, and fix those up. And as far as something I would love to see, and I, I think I heard that this is coming, is um, something for kids, uh, you know, whether it be like uh, with, uh, oh, uh, bumper boats and race cars and all that kind of stuff. Something that, you know, the family, putt-putt golf, something like that in the community would be really great. Um, and then as far as the solar farms, oh, um, you can get me started on that. Um, I am not in agreement with solar farms, and I do understand the property rights issue of it. Um, when my in-laws lived on the back of our property, we had to get a variance, we had to get approval, but first we had to reach out to our neighbors to see if it was okay. That was the first thing we had to do. Um, so that's just one of the, the points with the neighbors and the solar farms. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. And next, uh, Mike Molinar, do you want me to repeat the question? I don't think that's necessary. Okay. I'm sorry, um, I don't think that's necessary to repeat it. Uh, our uh, infrastructure, I think, is the first big thing that comes to my mind when you start talking about uh, uh, progress in this county. And uh, I heard a little bit ago about how it doesn't sound like the county's doing well. Well, I think it is. I, as a county council member for the last eight years, and, and I think for many, many years even before that, that's been the, uh, the big question in LaPorte County. And I think our county is growing and doing a lot of good, a lot of good uh, programs right now. Uh, policies. Uh, one coming to mind, I know one minute's not going to be long enough to name everything, such as Kingsbury Ordnance Plant and how that's growing and that's going to bring, that's bringing industry and construction down there, the double tracking in Michigan City, and our, my, uh, our vote just recently to support the water and sewer project for Hudson, Line, Hudson Lake and Saugany Lake, which I think is really going to improve that area and you're going to see some growth over there, especially with all the industry coming to into St. Joseph County and in St. Joseph County and also okay. into LaPorte County. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And um, Adam Karanka, do you want me to read the question? Okay. I think we're good. So as a member of the Redevelopment Commission, I was proud to see that we were finally making progress on working on a plan to actually acquire the well, let's say survey, then potentially acquire each of the roads from first line down through fifth line and further in order to make them part of the, call it the, the road inventory for the county so that it is proper infrastructure for businesses to be built out there. Nobody wants to buy a plot where they're going to be re responsible for bringing in paved roads for, uh, suitable for the trucks and other traffic that's going to be coming to their business. That should be on the county's responsibility, and that's what we're working forward to in order to support it from an infrastructure standpoint. From a business standpoint, look at what our neighbors are doing. Try to take some of the 
uh, opportunities we're going to have to the east and to the west and draw in supporting businesses, whether that be logistics, whether that be other material suppliers, something to help those other manufacturers in order to keep everything close by and learn and earn off of their development as well. Thank you. Thank you. And Brett Kessler. Do you want me to repeat the question? I'm good, thank okay. you. All right, so one thing to remember is uh, LaPorte County is really cool, whether it's from the shores of Lake Michigan down to the banks of Kent Key. We've got several different land types and geographies, and it's important to keep those as part of our infrastructure. Um, you know, we've, we've got areas that we can redevelop, whether it's Teledyne, areas in Michigan City, to put businesses back in those places or maybe change it to housing we need to remember that farmland is an infinite um, commodity we can't chew it all up and expect more to be there as far as the solar goes i'm proud to say i have solar on my barn and honestly i would rather not see any farm ground go until every house business and car lot has solar over it so that's my opinion on that so thank you okay thank you okay um and next question will be um, for Heather Oak. How would you evaluate this, the county's current financial condition? If elected, what would your approach be to improve it? So, <clears throat> currently I've gotten some mixed messages. Um, I have heard from some people that we are within budget. I've heard from other people we are not within budget. Um, it's hard to know without being on the county council currently what is the factual truth. Um, but I will say um, I was an emergency room manager and we had a operating budget between uh, where we had 40 page, or 40 uh, staff that we had to account for and uh, 20 to 40,000 patients annually that we had to maintain this budget and we had to look at different ways, whether that be um, decreasing our supplies or changing supplies, looking at our staffing on an hourly basis according to our census. And these are all kinds of things that I feel like um, I would have experience in and looking at our budget and uh, maintaining a budget and looking at those funds and seeing what we can do if, if any can be cut. Okay, thank you. And the same question now for Johnny Stimley. How would you evaluate the county's current financial condition? If elected, what would your approach be to improve it? Okay, when it comes, when it comes to budget, um, you know, I said on the city council and I was county recorder. One of the things, when you, when, you, when, you, when you come up in front of the council for budget hearings, you gotta be treat, treated with respect. Uh, one of the things I found out when it comes to different budgets, these different departments feel like they have to spend the money right beforehand to get it back the following year. I will not take that approach with the different departments like that. If they, if they have something left over, we'll take a look at it. I will not cut it automatically. That is one of the things I will not do. Okay, thank you. And the same question now for Brett Kessler. Um, how would you evaluate the county's current financial condition if elected, what would your approach be to improve it? Um, right now, I'd probably give it a B plus. Um, are there spots where we could improve? Obviously, although I think the council right now, between the council and commissioners, they've been doing a really good job at looking at possibly leasing our automotive fleet, um, different purchasing um, outlets. But we also have to remember we've got an aging infrastructure as far as the bridges go, and we're going to have to uh, take a hard look at those and come up with funding for those. As I've said uh, throughout the campaign, I'm really proud of LaPorte County roads and want to maintain those. Anybody that's been up and down near their fail road, small road, and seeing the improvements the county highways made um, and widening the tree lines has been awesome. And I just use those as two examples. Um, but we, 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 we can still look at ways of saving the taxpayers dollars um, until uh, we, we save the most money for everyone in the county. Okay, thank you. And now um, there's a different question for the two um, incumbent uh, council members, um, Adam Karanka and Mike Molenauer. Um, and we'll begin with 
on Mike Molenauer. Does the county have a plan for future capital expenditures? If not, should it develop one so that its needs are prioritized and funding sources can be identified? Mike Molenauer. I think I know where that question came from, and uh, that's being considered, or I think it's going to be considered uh, from what I'm hearing right now. So I really don't have uh, a definite opinion. What I've read on it, I think it's going to be, I think it possibly be a good idea, and uh, but I certainly want to investigate it and hear a lot more about it before uh, I make any judgment on that, because that was just uh, brought up very recently. Okay. Thank you. And the same question for Adam Karanka. From my experience in business, there's always a need for a capital projects plan. And the reason for that is, is you know that you've always got some level of aging in infrastructure or there is some improvement that is going to take you to the next level. From, from a county standpoint, it's always going to be the aging infrastructure, whether that be vehicles, whether that be um, other equipment that has to do with, let's say, uh, boilers and chillers that have to do with county buildings. Anything has an age to it, and you've got to have a plan to be able to have some level of money left in the, um, call it your savings account, in order to handle those. But have a plan. Don't wait for it to fail. And that, that's what a capital projects plan addresses. It did come up recently. It was one of those things that we have to get past the contention between the council and the commissioners in order to come up with a unified plan because the commissioners come up with the projects, we come up how to, with how to fund them. The only way to make that work is to be able to work as a team, and that's what I plan to do. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, now this question will be um, for all five of you, and we're going to begin with, um, well, with Brett Kessler. Uh, what is your position on diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI? And please explain your reasoning. All right. Um, so I, I've always been one that the best person for the job is the one we get. Um, I'm, you know, when we're on the farm, whether we're truck driving, uh, we accept all um, – applicants and base your um, hire on whether you're capable of doing the job you have in front of you. So that's what I've got on that. Okay. Thank you. And Adam Kronka? I will state that from a council standpoint, this sort of policy is something that's outside of our realm. However, we always have to encourage the right the right things to be done, whether that be as addressing the commissioners or some other avenue, uh, maybe as a liaison to the departments like we serve it currently. Um, when it comes to that, it comes down to having a diverse board that has to do with some of the selection of these candidates. Once you have the applicants and you've gone through their credentials, do you have more than one person working with the hiring manager in order to cast different opinions and different perspectives on that, say, um, interview to assure that you do have all of the best attributes out of there to where you're not necessarily have one individual that is keying in on one facet of their skill set or their personality. Um, that will help broaden the um, opinion and approach of the candidate to assure that you're getting the right person. Okay. Thank you. And Mike Molenauer. What is your position on diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI? Please explain your reasoning. Well, fairness is the biggest thing, and I couldn't answer it any better than what Adam just did, uh, Councilman Karanka. Um, but I think we, as a, t as a county council, and it was mentioned a little bit ago, we work well as a team, and I think we can accomplish anything that uh, we work very well bipartisan. We don't leave politics stand in the way. And we work, it, we work that uh, fairness and common sense, and I don't think I can say any more. I mean, it, uh, it, uh, okay. it's what the uh, council does, and uh, I think we're doing an extremely good job because of, because of those facts of, of working together as a team and uh, not letting politics get in the way. Okay, thank you. 
and Heather Oak. I would have to agree with Brett, um, and I would have, just have to say, too, just because I'm a woman doesn't mean that I should get to have a certain position over a man um, who may be more qualified. And, um, you know, and, and when we look at skin color and stuff, there's four Hispanic boys that uh, I've really have been great friends of, of ours, and um, they their dad is is full on Hispanic. Mom is full Caucasian, I guess. And um, three of the boys have brown skin color and one of the boys has white. And so, but they are, you know, they're the same. They're 50-50 or however you want to say. And no one would know that um, if you just look at his skin color. Okay. Thank you. And Johnny Stimley. Um, like you said, um, the um, last four answers, you know, I, I concur with, the, with, with them all. You know, um, like you said, uh, we, we, we have our organization here in Mich Michigan City, and, uh, you know, we keep it open. And all the kids, no matter race, color, religion, um, what it comes down to. So, like I said, you, t you work together with everything, everybody and just be fair. Okay. Thank you. And the next question um, will be for everyone again. Um, it might be a very short answer, um, but we'll see. Have you developed collegial relationships with county government departments to ensure cooperative efforts to run the courts and elections efficiently? And we'll begin with um, Adam Karanka. When I came onto the council just, just under two years ago, I made a point to go out and meet as many departments as I could even before I had my liaison assignments, meaning my assignments to different departments to which I'm to work and have a strong relationship with. I've met many, many employees, uh, so much so that I was actually proud to actually receive a co phone call from a county employee that I've never met before just this morning. And it had to do with an issue that they were asking for me to, to follow up on that they had heard that I was already uh, working on for another employee. So to that, you have to make yourself approachable. It's, it's like leadership in any kind of organization, whether that be government, whether that be in business, uh, as an owner or being um, just another manager within a large corporation. Be approachable. That way, that's the first thing as part of being a, a good, sound source of solving problems. Thank you. And Mike Molenauer, same question. Have you developed collegial relationships with county government departments to ensure cooperative efforts to run the courts and elections efficiently? I believe so. Uh, with my 37 years of law enforcement experience, I think that probably uh, makes me pretty uh, much of an expert on dealing with people. And um, I've made it a point in my almost eight years to meet with as many elected officials and department employees and uh, to be treat them always fair is my motto. Uh, everybody probably knows that uh, the county council worked very hard about two years ago to get our employees some pretty substantial raises, especially law enforcement and EMS, uh, due to the fact that they were so underpaid and we were losing so many employees. And uh, I think they're all very grateful for that. We're grateful for their experience and their dedication to this county, and that's what makes it pretty easy with meeting with all of them and discussing any problems that they either have or have, may have had. Uh, again, it's, uh, it's teamwork, and I think we're pretty experienced and we do that pretty well. Thank, Thank you. you. And Heather, oh, same question. Do you want me to repeat the question? Um, have you developed collegial relationships with the county government departments to ensure cooperative efforts to run the courts and elections efficiently? Okay. Um, I don't know that I can say that I've done that. I definitely have um, reached out to my elected officials via email or in person if there was an issue um, that I thought needed resolved or I maybe didn't agree with. But as far as interpersonal skills in general, I would say there's nobody that I hate or even really dislike. Um, and working uh, in nursing, you really have to care for everybody, whether um, no matter what background they have, no matter if you agree with them or disagree with them. Um, same with, with foster care. I work with, I have parents coming to my home to pick up children, and I may not 
be real fond of the parents' decisions they're making or feel that they're doing good by their kids, but I still am going to treat them with respect and, um, uh, you know, just be kind to them for the fact of their children. Okay, thank you. I should have um, modified this for you to say, will you develop, uh, but you answered that anyway, thank you. Um, and so the question for uh, Johnny Stimley, will you develop collegial relationships with county government departments to ensure cooperative efforts to run the courts and elections efficiently? I believe uh, one of the biggest assets we have is our county employees. Uh, one thing that I took pride on when I was in the city council, and I'll do it again, they said, Johnny, what would be one of the first things that you do if you're a county councilman? I will go around to each department head, an elected official, and reduce myself, give them my cell phone number. Then, at the, then I will go around and talk to all the, as many county employees as I can. Thank you. And Brett Kessler. So um, being involved either through Farm Bureau, uh, LaPorte County Ag Association, Operation Feed LaPorte County, um, you have a pretty good relationship with either county highway, sheriff's department, the judges that uh, sit throughout LaPorte County, the maintenance department. Um, we could probably have a phone call with all of them right now. Um, so I, I, I think those relationships are already started. And um, if elected uh, after November 5th, they'd uh, just be cemented further. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question will be to the um, for the two incumbents here, um, Adam Karanka and Mike Molinar. The State Board of Accounts recently released their compliance report for the 2020 audit of our county. Have you reviewed the report, and what is your reaction to it? And we'll begin with Adam Karanka. I have reviewed the report, and one of the things that sticks very closely with me is is something that's similar to what I do in industry. When it comes down to having, um, when you talk about good internal controls, that has a lot to do with policies and procedures in a regimen and how certain situations are followed. How, uh, it's not meant to be a tribal knowledge, meaning the fact that you met, remember how it's supposed to be done and the way that you learned was based off of the way that somebody taught you. There's no written instruction, there's no procedure. That is one thing that seems to be lacking based on their assessment. And I tend to agree based on a few things that I've seen. Not that we're doing it wrong, it just it doesn't, the, the instruction doesn't exist. And that's one thing that would be a great improvement because over time, we end up having to train a lot of people because you have 30, 40, 50 year employees that will retire and move on, leaving new people to start. Okay, thank you. And Mike Molinar, same question. I, too, have reviewed, I think, all of it, if not most of it, and uh, there's nothing from what I've seen, any real serious issues. State Board of Accounts, uh, I think, does a tremendous job. When I was sheriff for eight years, well, I really got to experience that firsthand. And they uh, they they go over everything, and uh, it's, it's a tool to learn from, really. It's not to... Uh, it's a training tool, and what they're doing is they, they want you to, the, everybody makes mistakes, and as long as they're small mistakes, and I, from what I read and w looked at the review, why that's what they are, and uh, they learn by that, and that's, of course, the department heads that have to learn by that, and uh, it's us to help guide them if, if necessary with any questions they may, they may, may have or to support them, and uh, I really think we've got... Uh, outstanding uh, team of employees here uh, I can't I can't uh, say enough about them they threw they've stuck through thick and thin when we really had some real uh, wage problems and like I mentioned a little bit ago fortunately we've been able to uh, handle that and get them some some uh, decent wages to show our appreciation thank you okay thank you and now we have um, three different questions for the three um, three uh, candidates left um, for this final question. Um, and this will be for Heather. What steps will be important to facilitate development of additional housing in LaPorte County? Um, off the top of my head, I can't say what steps will will be taken. Um, I don't know 
if that is what we need right now, additional housing. Um, I have seen quite a few houses on the market in LaPorte County that are, are not selling. Um, so I would have to, before I would say what steps I need to take, I'd have to see if steps need to be taken in that direction um, as it is. If that's what the the county and the, the people I'm serving felt like, then we'd have to go from there. Okay. Thank you. Um, and for Johnny Stimley, what impact will the $1.5 billion of investment from St. Joe County have on the citizens of LaPorte? Oh. One of, the, one of the things, um, like you said, said, you have to consider uh, with St. Joe County, when you talk about the housing in LaPorte County, you know, we have to work with the economic development team. Um, it's right across our lines. You know, as a former BCA member and on the county sewers, I understand the infrastructure that it takes to do the housing projects. Uh, we have to utilize the vibrant community study that we once had. You have to realize where the infrastructure already assist in LaPorte County and go from there also. Like you said, you have to have the access to amenities um, with the walking trails, the green space when it comes to different things in housing. And you have to make affordable housing, whether it's two duplex, triplexes, whatever it may be. Okay. Thank you. And um, Brett Kessler, your final question. On Monday evening, the council voted to ask the commissioners to give them remote read-only access to the low system of financial records. The access would be only on county-owned computers with multifaceted authentication. Wednesday, the commissioners tabled it. What is your position on this? Um, <laughs> that... Do you want I, me to repeat this? It's really I, I, I got it. Um, okay. I, I don't have a firm grasp on that yet, and I was not at the council meeting, so I, I would rather not respond to that at this time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm I'd like sorry. To I'd like to respond to that. Uh, oh, okay. You could do that in your closing if you wish to, if you want to make your your closing. Um use that for your closing you can and any questions that any of you wish to expand on you can do that in your closing if you wish to so we will continue now with the uh, one minute closing statements from each of the candidates and we'll begin with Mike Molinar okay thank you very, very much for having us tonight uh, thanks to the League of Women Voters and Access LaPorte County I'm going to make make it try and get this in real quick about the uh, uh, remote access because uh, I was the one that was at the council meeting and read uh, a letter that uh, Councilman Cunningham uh, wrote and I supported 100 percent and it was to allow county employees or, or I'm sorry allow all seven county council members to have remote access to our allow uh, financial uh, system and uh, we'll see how that goes I just hope it doesn't become a political football back and forth. But anyway, uh, I'm Mike Mullenauer. I'm uh, presently a council, county councilman. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm on my second term, seeking my third term. Uh, appreciate your vote. I'm uh, experienced. Uh, uh, been in county government, as I mentioned before, 37 years in the LaPorte County Sheriff's Department, eight years as the sheriff, the leader of the, of the Sheriff's Department, and the past uh, two terms as a county councilman. And I appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you. And Adam Karanka, your one-minute closing statement. As the current Vice President of the LaPorte County Council, I want to be on the Council for another four years to serve the residents of LaPorte County in an, in an objective and no-nonsense manner. Uh, LaPorte County doesn't deserve the uh, the circus that it often can be with when it comes to public meetings and how the different boards have, have been in the past. Um, Um, one thing I want to remind everybody for, uh, remind everybody of, when it comes to the at-large seats on the ballot, whether you vote straight ticket or not, you have to go down to the council seats and select your, you make your selections. If you make a straight ticket vote, there will be no votes for county council. So please make a point to go down the ballot and make your selections. 
My name is Adam Caranco, your current Vice President of the Port County Council, and I appreciate your vote on or before November 5th. Thank you. And Brett Kessler. Thank you. And once again, thank you, League of Women Voters in Alcoa, for having us here tonight. Um, it's been a pleasure um, throughout my adult life serving, um, whether it's through the Port County Ag Association, whether it's serving 4-H members, FFA members, whether it's serving Purdue Council on Ag Research Extension and Teaching, going to D.C. and vying for dollars to come back to LaPorte County. Um, Extension's been in my heart my entire life. Um, serving has been part of my family's history. Whether you go back to my grandfather or great-grandfather, we've all tried to serve LaPorte County for the best. Um, I, I appreciate your vote on or before November 5th and hope to be a great county councilman if so elected. Thank you. Thank you. And Johnny Stimley. Uh, what, what, what takes LaPorte County to move forward? I believe it's like a puzzle. The housing has to be there. The employees, the infrastructure, the economic development, they all have to fit in. You, you have to work with the cities. If you want someone with new ideas, a fresh face, and change in LaPorte County, and a voice for the people, you know, I believe that is me. You're not only voting for the person, but you're voting for the future of the poor county. I always say vote equals trust, and I hope you have that trust in me to make me the next Laporte County Council member. I encourage you to visit my website for all my uh, uh, policies and views on the county. Thank you. Thank you. And Heather Oak. It would be an honor to serve on the council. Um, like I said, I have lots of experience in serving others at home, at work, um, and it would be a joy to be able to do that in our community as well. So I hope that um, you choose me as one of your three candidates. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, let's give all of the candidates a hand, please. Thank you to all of the county council at-large candidates who are here tonight and the one that uh, is not here. But thank you all very much for coming tonight. And you can be seated again. We will continue now with the forum. Um, Jim Pressel is, could I have your attention? Um, Jim Pressel is the candidate, the Republican candidate for state representative District 20. He it was invited, but he notified us that he was unable to attend tonight. He had another engagement. He is running unopposed. And uh, we turn now to Senate, uh, State Senate District 08. The candidates are Mike Bohachik, Republican candidate, and um, we did not hear from him. And Leon P. Smith, the Democratic candidate. We also didn't hear from you, but we're very happy that you're here. So thank you. And um, and even if a candidate is unopposed or if their opponent is not here, we still go ahead and ask questions. So, so we will begin with a two-minute opening statement from Leon P. Smith, Democratic candidate for State Senate, District 8. Hi, um, I would like to thank uh, the League of Women Voters uh, for being here and for ALCO for covering it. Um, and I would like to thank the state of Indiana for providing me with a uh, first-rate public education with uh, lessons in, in, in uh, math and geometry from people like Jill Hassel and uh, and uh, George Irvin from Triton High School, uh, Triton School Corporation, and uh, lessons in calculus from people like Dr. Julian Geverts at the Indiana Academy, and, and lessons in logic from people like uh, Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Michael Dunn at, at Indiana University, Bloomington. And unfortunately, I think the state of Indiana, while historically we have done reasonably well, often with uh, public education, we have fallen behind. We are at near the bottom of the country in terms of state, uh, in terms of teacher pay, and I am running to 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 raise the pay of all teachers. Um, and I also, to be blunt, the state of Indiana has not done a good job about protecting Hoosiers from their employers and landlords. And I am um, running to to 
cra to see a, a crackdown on white collar crime here in the state of Indiana. Um, and uh, and so I, uh, the math curriculum is is near and dear to my heart, and I would like to see the math curriculum. Uh, be integrated with computer programming so we use computer we teach children to use computer programming to learn about math and we teach children to use math to learn about computer programming thank you okay thank you um and now we have a lot of questions for you um these two i'll see if i can put them together because they're about the same issue um what is your understanding of the movement to establish an independent uh, nonpartisan redistricting commission in Indiana to manage the redistricting process. What is your opin opinion of a nonpartisan redistricting commission? And also, related to this, it's been decades since there has been a comprehensive review of Indiana's election laws and regulations. Do you feel this is an important issue? Um, uh, yeah, I care a lot about uh, election reform, and uh, personally, I support uh, approval voting for all single winner uh, elections. I would like to see at least one of our st uh, state house legislatures be chosen by proportional representation. That seems a bit out there, and I'm not expecting that to happen soon. But uh, we need to get rid of gerrymandering. There's a, a, a number of different uh, uh, solutions. Uh, there's algorithmic districting. Um, there is, uh, there is uh, you know, proportional representation. Or there is uh, nonpartisan redistricting commissions, which I think have been pretty effective uh, elsewhere at, at cutting down on the shenanigans involved in, in gerrymandering. Um, which and which we absolutely need to to eliminate and get away from that. Um, okay, thank you. Um, what is your position on eliminating property taxes? Um, I I don't know. Uh, I I think that we need to eliminate the funding of schools uh, from property tax, like we need to fund our schools from something other than property tax so that we have equitable funding across all of our public schools. Um, and uh, beyond that, I haven't thought very deeply about that issue, to be honest. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Are you in favor of making major changes to the high school core 40 graduation diploma? Please speak to the three tracks of college, military, and workforce. Um, well, I, I think we have done a great disservice to the, this country in devaluing um, vocational education. And um, I know Triton at one point had a machine shop and a wood shop and like Triton doesn't have those anymore, I don't think. And I, I think that's a real mistake because, you know, not everyone needs to have fancy educations to, to, to get a job. And to be honest, everyone deserves uh, a, an adequate job no matter what kind of education they have. Okay. Um, and I think this is related to this, although... I'm not sure it's specific enough for a question. Why is a new school program needed every year? Um, I, well, uh, I, I suppose if I go back to, I'm also in favor of, of, of significant reforms to the math education, although I don't want to get too deep into the weeds on that. Um, especially uh, we can... Uh, uh, Using computer programming and some of some really neat ideas that are well connected to, to very advanced ideas in research and mathematics that are actually also approachable by children, like um, things like the stern broco tree and Pascal's triangle and the symmetry group of the square. Um, and all of these things have the ability to, um, you know, to 
create a citizenship that are, are capable of solving many more problems, but also, uh, you know, uh, basically make it much easier to learn math uh, more efficiently and uh, and much more effectively. And I also I would say that sometimes this we have an overemphasis on uh, efficiency in this culture and and uh, anyway. Okay, thank you. Um, in the latest U.S. News and World Report ranking of states in various areas, Indiana ranked fairly high in several categories, but it ranked 50th out of 50 states in terms of protecting the natural environment. Should that be a concern for the General Assembly? Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, there are, uh, unfortunately, I, I've lived in in Indiana for most of my life, and I know there are certain topics in which you can almost consistently expect um, the state government to be a major disappointment, and, and I know environment is one of them. And I, that's unfortunate, and I think we need to take responsibility for um, going after uh, polluters in Indiana and um, for, you know, maintaining a, a, a clean and livable environment for all people here. Okay. Um, what reasonable gun restrictions could pass in Indiana that could help curb gun violence? And do you think that assault weapons, high-capacity magazines, and bump stocks should be banned? Um, I, I have no idea. Uh, again, living in rural Indiana for most of my life, uh, you know, any sort of reasonable discussion of, of, of reasonable gun restrictions has typically been off the table, which is unfortunate. Um, but um, I, I do believe there is no reason anybody should have a bump stock. And, and you know, we have a perfectly viable system for uh, machine guns via the 1930-whatever uh, the National Firearms Act. Um, and I don't see why, you know, why that's... Uh, I don't see why we've gotten to the point that, like, everyone needs a machine gun and, and the Second Amendment means everyone can own machine guns, which I don't think that's what that means. Thank you. Okay. Um, where do you stand on abortion? Um, I believe abortion care is health care, and I believe, um, uh, you know, it is the woman's right to choose, uh, you know, and if you feel uh, pressured to into or out of an abortion that you want to have or not want to have, that's, I think, a, a problem, right? And, and I think when it comes to making that choice, the only people involved are really the woman, her doctor, and whoever uh, whoever that woman chooses to involve, and that's that's it. Okay. Um, what's, what specific legislation would be your top priority in the 2025 session of the state legislature if you were elected? Well, I, I would very much like to see a, a raise for all p public school teachers, and uh, I would like to see, um, uh, I would like to see uh, crackdowns on white collar crime, and I would like to see uh, uh, math curriculum reform. That's, of course, my, one of my pet issues, um, which I know is a little unusual, but uh, I've been been at that uh, issue my entire life, so I'm not going to give that one up. Okay, thank you. And your final question, what would be different about our representation if you were elected as our senator? Well, um, I would take seriously a, a lot of uh, uh, positions that aren't well represented um, here in Indiana um, and I think should be. Um, and I will bring, uh, you know, my analytical skills uh, and, and my engineering skills uh, to the problem, um, to, to whatever problems I can to, 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 
to make any kind of contribution to make the best um, civil governance for Hoosiers uh, that we can provide. Okay, thank you very much for for this, for answering all these questions. Um, that was a lot of them. Um, and you may now give your one-minute closing statement. Well, I think um, I, I've said much of what's on my mind, but uh, I think I, I have been very burnt out and disappointed this year, especially seeing the level of, of honesty in, in our discourse. And that makes me sad, but I think we can become more honest again. And um, I would like us to all become more honest again. So please vote blue on November 5th. Okay, thank you very much. Please give uh, the candidate a hand. Thank you. Uh, thank you again to all of the candidates who are here tonight uh, for joining us tonight and for sharing your views with us. This is not an easy process for any of the candidates, I, I know that. We remind all of the audience members again to take a look at our online voters guide, vote411.org. And on behalf of the League of Women Voters of LaPorte County uh, board and members, as well as Access LaPorte County, we thank you for attending this forum. And remember, voting is the way that you make your voice heard. This concludes this candidate's forum. Thank you.